Monday night. <laughs> and I'd love to introduce the crew to you. First off, from Columbus, Ohio, we have Mr. Donald Culp. Hello, everybody. And then just back, she's back home in Connecticut, our own Chris Ray. Hello. And then we have Michael and Dana still sitting down there in Houston, being hot. <laughs> Hello. And we have Sydney Mitchell in Pennsylvania. Hello. And then we come back to Brooklyn where all the bullets, bullets are flying around and all the craziness that goes on in this city. All right, so in any case, would somebody like to open with a word of Heavenly prayer? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for tonight. Thank you for your love that you have for us. Thank you for keeping us in the hollows of your hand, Father. Father, thank you for everybody here. Thank you for calling everybody off. Sir, in this humidity, Father, I just thank you for a sweet sleep. Path of all understanding that we just grab hold of that and just keep it, Father. I just thank you for your love that you have for us. God and Son Jesus Christ, the dark was, and He arose, holy access to you and to, to your heart, that we can come to your throne of grace out when we need it. Father, I just thank you for all that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter three. All the scriptures in this teaching will be from the Revised English, unless otherwise noted. Note, the first word is therefore. Therefore, which is an adverb. An adverb defi is defined as a noun, non-adverb, noun adverb, plural noun adverbs. A word or phrase that modifies or qualifies an adjective or a verb or another adverb or word group expressing a relation of the Greek word is hofen. It means for this reason. So you must know what came before to understand what comes after this word. So it is referring to something that came before chapters one and two. To understand that which follows, you need to understand that which came before. Do not confuse being an heir with being saved. All joint heirs with Christ are saved. <coughs> you have to be saved to have achieved the position of a joint heir. You must already be saved to be an heir. So anytime it says anything about inheriting something, it is not talking about salvation. In chapter 1, verse 6, it talks about the angels worshiping Jesus. That does not mean back in Luke when Jesus was born, but when he was born again, when God raised him from the dead in Luke, when God raised him from the dead. In Luke 2, it said they praised or worshiped God, not Jesus Christ. If you want to look at through Luke chapter um to that should be Luke 2. Um it says that the, the angels worship God, not Jesus Christ. Uh in chapter 1 8, when it talks about Christ, the word God is uh the word when it refers to Christ, Jesus as being Christ as being God, the word God is, has a lowercase g. And that is correct. There are many quotes from the Hebrew scriptures that must be understood in that light. There, there are places in um, Psalms, I know it, where it talks about we're all gods, and it uses a small g, and that's correct. We are gods to this world, but we're not the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're just representatives of God. Chapter uh, At the end of chapter one, it is speaking about the mission of angels. 
chapter two is in the middle of the context and should be seen that way. In chapter two, verse four, when it speaks of gifts, it is not the so-called gifts of first Corinthians chapter 12, verse one, which are not gifts at all. The, the word gifts was added it's not, it's not in the Greek text, it was added by the translators. There is more about this in, that can be found in my blog, The New Man in Christ. So let's go to chapter three, Therefore, verse one. holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, think carefully. That's the word Greek, the Greek is kationa, kationo, however that's pronounced, about, about Jesus Christ the apostle and high priest whom we confess. The word partakers is used six times in the word of God, five times here in Hebrews and once in Luke. Here is how the NIV translates verse one. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts that's that Greek word katano on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. Most translations render the Greek word katino as consider. Both the NIV and the REV, I believe, have the truest meaning of the truer sense of meaning of the sense. Now Bollinger has an interesting translation. From the appendix of, of the Companion Bible, Ketano means to perceive with the senses, referring to an object of observation. In other words, it's like you're sitting there looking at a piece of art, okay? You're looking at art and uh, you're examining it very carefully, seeing how, you know, the different light directions and all the shadows and you know all the little things that you do with uh, a piece of art as you look at it. So that's what the word perceive re means according to Bollinger rather than the act of getting to know as in genosto uh, or genosto. That, that would be to learn by experience. You know if you've never driven a car you have no idea how to do it. It's once you start driving that you start learning. Where the other word in Catano is used of looking at a fixed object and uh, perceiving it. He translates this verse as calling and become and come to understand the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus. We're told to come to understand a slightly more modern way of saying this is we're going to get to know Jesus. Just like anyone else, you got to hang out with the Lord and talk to him. You also have to read the word that tells us a large amount about our Lord. But you still need to apply that, what the word says about him, and to get to know him even better, share your heart with him. After all, he's the head of the church. From the NIV in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, the last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under his, him, it clearly, it's clear that it does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he had done this, then the son himself will be made subject to everything and put under him so that God may be all in all. Why shouldn't we talk to the Lord? He's our brother. It says so in Acts 2.36. He's our Lord and brother. And he's the head of the church. He wants only the best for you or me. He, only, he wants us only to be the best. God has put all things under his feet. 
he's in charge. Like back in Genesis with uh, Joseph and the Pharaoh, Joseph was put in charge. The Pharaoh was still the Pharaoh, you know, hey, Joseph, I'm taking off. I got to go play some, you know, a few rounds of golf, make sure the country doesn't fall apart while I'm gone. And that's how it is with Jesus Christ. He has been put in charge of everything until he hands it back to God in Revelation. Jesus Christ, there's no reason why we shouldn't talk to him. We shouldn't share our hearts with him. We should look to him for advice or how to do, you know, if you're, if you're not sure about what to do in a situation, you know, tell him about it. You can tell God about it too, but Jesus Christ is the one who's the head of the body. He's the one who has gives it the direction and he is the, the one in charge of the body. So it is up to us to talk to him. Okay, let's move on here before I get on a soapbox and go on that all night. Okay, Hebrews 3.2. Who was faithful to him when he appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all his house? Now, this is from the commentary from the REV. This is the, the link down here where you can go to it. If you, have, if you want to check it out, or you can just go to Truth or Tradition and find the REV and go to Hebrews chapter 3 and look at the, um, a pet, the uh, commentary for it, because it has commentary for a lot of the things in that, and it really can make things a lot clearer. Commentary for Hebrews 3, 2. Who was faithful to him who appointed him? just as Moses was also faithful to his house, him and his refer to God and capitalize for clarity. Appointed is the Greek word paio, to make or to do. In context, God made Christ the high priest. So appoint is a clearer than simply made. Lenski made him what he is, is how he translates it, which would be a better way if you wanted to keep it clear, keep to the word made and still retain the meaning in the passage in all his house. Moses was faithful to God, God's house in the context, in his, in context, the his refers to God. And that's where you can might highlight from where the, uh, so the, this is going to be posted tomorrow, by the way. It's going to be um, posted tomorrow on Facebook and um, Google Plus. For he has, for he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses just as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the one who builds a house. Moses sometimes, sometimes thing in, things that God has in his word are not immediately apparent, even to those who have been, it's uh, more immediately, okay, here, let me try this again. Sometimes things that God has in his word are not immediately apparent to us, even though they would be immediately apparent unto the people living in biblical times. At the time the scripture was written, this is such a case. We may not know why God compared Moses to the Messiah here, but in Hebrews, but at the time Hebrews was written, it was not an uncommon among the Jews to think of Jesus as a second Moses. This passage makes it clear that the Messiah was not a second Moses, but a commentary more? for Hebrews 3.3. 3. Okay. 
For every house that is built by someone, but the one who built all things is God. And Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for the testimony of those things that were said later. But Christ is faithful as a son over whom his house and we are we are his house if we hold on to firmly onto the confidence that our boasting into is the hope to the end. Moses was faithful, a faithful servant, did what God wanted him to do for the most part. Jesus Christ was a faithful servant, carrying out the instructions of God to the letter. How about you? Are you endeavoring to do that which God is asking you? Do you see why Jesus can't be God? If Jesus is our example, as well as God, there is no way we could have gotten it, we could have gotten it wrong. According to Romans, Jesus is the second Adam who could, who could get it wrong. There is no way he can be both. It is up to you to decide, are you going to work for God or are you going to ignore him? That was the same decision Jesus Christ had to make every day. Verse 7, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as they did in the rebellion and the day of the trial in the desert. If you hear his voice, the verb here is second person, plural, subject, subjunctive. It may be that God will not speak to us and therefore we will not hear his voice but if he does speak to us then we should not harden our hearts as the Israelites did in the desert how many times did, how many times did Israel go whoring after other gods how many evil kings did they have I think there were two or three who weren't evil. All the rest of the kings were evil and they tried to outdo each other at times, it seemed. You know, we don't want to go whoring after other gods. We don't want to make other things more important than what the word says. You know, there's, there's all this stuff going on with politics nowadays. <clears throat> and I've, I've talked about it before, and I'm still going to stand up here and say it again. If you put the politics ahead of God, then you're just wrong. Dead politics wrong. is a religion. It really is. If you don't believe me, just look at it. It becomes people's religion. Oh, I'm a conservative, and I have to vote. Baloney. Just stand up on the principles of God. Remember that God invented civil government in Genesis 6 when he handed down the death penalty that told Mo, um, Noah that you, know, you guys are going to have to start using the death penalty to keep people in line because he just had to wipe out the whole world basically because they weren't doing that. All right, verse 9. Where were your fathers? Where your fathers put me to the test by trying me out and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was disgusted with it. That generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. Moreover, they did not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they will never enter into my rest. Does that mean they were never going to end up in the resurrection of the just? No, it doesn't mean that. Starting in verse 9 and ending in verse 11, we have a figure of speech called the known. It just means that it's a quote from the Hebrew scriptures. It is quoting Psalm 
95 verses 9 and 10. It breaks it up differently than Psalms did. But that's probably because of the change of, in administrations. I mean, they were under the law in Psalms and the law were under grace now. So things are a little different. Starting in verse 9 and ending in verse 11, we... Oh yeah, I just did that. Verse 12, so see to it, so see to it, brothers, lest there be any one of you an evil and unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. But I exhort therefore every day, so long as it is still called today, lest any of you harden by, de by deceitful deceitfulness of sin, for you have become partakers of Christ. And if you hold our original confidence firm to the end, as it said today, hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Again, that's a quote from Psalm 95 verses 7 and 8. You know, there was a lot of rebellion that I happened. remember I was watching this show once. These guys are going to get bored because they've heard this story before. In any case, there was this house and they were excavating it. And they found an idol, you know, like five or six different idols sitting in the house. I said, that can't be God's. That can't be true. This is God's, you know, this is in Israel. This is, these are God's people. And then it struck me, how many times does it say in the old in the Hebrew scriptures, they left God? How many times did the um, a prophet have to go and try and bring Israel back? You know, it's not going to rain for three years. Remember that one? And so the prophet goes and hides and for three years, he's by this creek that finally dries up, and then he um, does some other stuff. And finally, he's one day sitting in a house, and he told his servant, "Go look outside and see if there's any rain clouds coming." And the guy went out and said, "No, nope, nothing there." And then a little while later, he said, "Go check again." And the guy said, "I think it was on the second time." He said. These guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure. <laughs> um, on the second time, he said, there's, there's a cloud out there the size of a man's hand. He said, go tell the king it's going to rain. To somebody. And so the guy went to the king and said, um, I think it was, I don't remember which prophet it was. Isaiah comes to mind, but I'm not sure. And so the, you know, this guy goes to the king and tells him it's going to rain and you better get moving. And uh, the prophet um, shifted around his garments so that they were like pants instead of those flowing robes. And he ran 20 miles or so to, the, to this place that he told the king to meet him. You know, and those are the sort of things that were going on in the Old Testament all the time. Just, you know, look at David and Saul. Saul was, you know, David killed Goliath. And after that, Saul just decided he wanted to kill him because he wasn't listening to God anymore. It says uh, um, an evil spirit took him over and, you know, he... he he just acted nuts sometimes. He threw a, um, a spear at David, tried to kill him on a couple of occasions. And that's not what we want to have. We want to be, you know, if you read in 1 Corinthians or in Ephesians chapter 4, about halfway through, you read, um, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor with his hands, working that which is good that he may have to give to him that need it. And that's a cool thing. In the, in the Greek scriptures, rather than the Hebrews, God only tells us not 
what not to do. He tells us what to do instead. They never had that at, uh, from Moses. All right. Well, in any case, for who having heard rebelled, indeed it was those who came out of Egypt, led by Moses, with whom he was dis displeased for 40 years. Was it not those who sinned? And carcasses and lay and fell in the desert? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? And we see that they were not able to enter into, they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. I like the NIV translation in verse 16. Who, when they heard, rebelled. We were not, were they not all those that Moses led out of Egypt? Now you've got to, I want you to sit here and think about this for a minute. These are the people that Moses led out of Egypt. Those people saw Moses perform miracles. The frogs, the, the, all the pestilence and all that, and all that led up to the Passover in Egypt. These people saw all that. They saw the Passover, the angel of death passing over the homes of the believers with the, the blood on the door frame, like lentil or something like that. And they saw the Egyptians all lose their firstborn well, they didn't. They saw Moses stand there after they left Egypt and the Egyptians were coming after him. They, Moses, they saw Moses raise his hand and the Red Sea parted. And they got through and the waters came back on top of the Egyptian army, which is right behind them at that point. Think about that. They saw these sort of things. And yet they didn't believe, they didn't trust in the word of God. God told them, go in there into Palestine. And they said, we can't do that. These guys, this guy's there. They're going to, you know, fight us. And so they sent out spies and the spies came back. And most of the spies said, oh, no, they're too big. They're too powerful for us. And Joshua and Cable came back and said, oh, it is awesome there. We got to go. We got to go now. And the children of Israel believed the gainsayers, the, you know, the people who, with the bad report. And those people, God got ticked off at them and said, you're not going to enter into my rest. Well, he was talking about them entering into the land of Canaan. They were not going to enter into Canaan because of what they did. And we, we, we've got to learn from this. Now, we, we're in the age of grace. We're not going to lose our salvation no matter what we do. But why not follow what God's telling us to do? Why not when, you know, if a situation arises and, you know, you feel the spirit leading you to do something, why not do it? The worst you'll do is look like an idiot. Most people think, most people around us think we're idiots anyway. So, you know, you know, in worse position than when you started. All right. Bollinger, in his notes and the appendix says, uh, the word who means a cert, just certain ones. He doesn't translate it that way, but it still it translates it some. It's supposed to be certain people. And that's what it is. It turned out to be everybody but um, Cable and Joshua. They all died in the desert 
before they entered into the promised land. And I believe it says that they were, for every day away from uh, Canaan that they were, they were going to spend a year in the desert. So they were in the desert for 40 years. So that means they were 40 days away from entering into the promise that God had given them. The word rebel is the Greek word, that word there. <laughs> this is the only place this is used in the Greek scriptures, but it is used often in the Septuagenuian. For those of you who've never heard of that, that is the Greek Old Testament. For more information, you can check out Wikipedia for Septuagint. I'm dealing with a lot of foreign words tonight. That always manages to get my uh, tongue killing things. It then asks an important question. The ones who rebelled were not the same ones who saw all the miracles. Were not the... No, let me, I'm sorry. Let me start that again. Those who rebelled were not the same ones who saw all the miracles in Egypt and saw the Red Sea parted. Were they not those people? One wonders, how could you see all of that then rebel? If it happened to them, it can happen to us. So guard your heart against rebellion against God. I've seen it happen to so many people. It's happened to me. I rebelled in my heart against God for a while. Not proud of it, but that's what happened. They are not told they are told not to be rebellious we should do the same sometimes it's easy but no one promised sometimes it's not easy but no one promised you an easy time in fact we were told by christ because they hated me expect them to hate you as well there's a great line from a, a line from a song and a song title I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. That applies here for all that we stand through. It will be rewarded. As you persevere, if you keep going, then you'll be rewarded. Remember the apostles were complaining to Christ at one point about all that they had lost because they followed him. And Jesus said, Look, I promise you that for everything you gave up, you'll receive a hundredfold back. Just think about that. For everything you've given up for God, you're going to be rewarded. These people never entered into the promised land because of their unbelief. Let us endeavor to stay faithful to God and Jesus so we can receive our full reward. So that's what we want, wanted to share. Um, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for um, being with us. And I thank you for us having non-rebellious hearts and that we can just do what your word says to do that's why you gave us the word and i thank you that we can humble ourselves and remember that you're greater than i you are big you're the best thing that ever happened to me i know that god and i thank you for your protection and your power and i thank you for watching out over all these people here with me tonight and i just thank you in your son's name for being the great and loving God you are. Amen.